the member from uh, Nepean Carlton uh, actually has expressed uh, or given notice of dissatisfaction to an answer given in question today by the uh, Minister of Energy. Now, the member from Nepean Carlton has up to uh, five minutes to debate the matter, and the minister has up to five minutes to reply. Carry, turn it over to the uh, member from the P. Carlton. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you to the Minister of Energy for being here this evening. As I understand it, in my 11 years in this place, it's not often that a minister takes the time uh, to debate with a, with a member of the opposition. It's usually their parliamentary secretary. So I do, uh, I do appreciate your attendance here today. Um, I normally don't take advantage of the late show, Speaker. Uh, because I understand in question period, I'm not always going to get the answer that I want. In fact, sometimes I don't get an answer at all. But what I wanted to do was actually have five minutes tonight to talk about the plight of the Ontario farmer, to talk about the plight of my friend Bob Mitchell, who owns SunTech Tomatoes and Greenhouses, and who is suffering, to talk about my friend Fernando Madario, who owns uh, Carlton Mushrooms and is suffering and my friend Dwight Foster, who owns North Gore Grain Elevators, and it's the largest grain operation in eastern Ontario. And they're suffering. There's a lot of burdens placed on our farmers in this province, but the high cost of energy is crippling them. And I'm going to add this. It's not only becoming an issue with making profit, it's not only an issue of keeping the lights on and the motors running. It's not just about ensuring that they're able to continue to employ people. It is affecting their stress. It is affecting their anxiety. And it is affecting their ability to do their job and to do it well. And it is affecting our food security in the province of Ontario. I want to uh, thank the minister for coming over to me um, before we spoke uh, here in this assembly to talk a little bit about these particular cases, and he has indicated to me that in these uh, individual cases that he will work on them. But it's really important to understand that the people who are providing agri-food in Ontario uh, do not feel that the government is with them. They have dealt with the neonics ban. They have dealt with the HST. They have dealt with the green energy tax. They are dealing with high costs of natural gas if they want to expand their operations and it's not available. They have to deal with cap and trade. They have to deal with pesticide ban. All of this has accumulated over the past decade, incrementally making it more difficult for them to adjust and, and to produce. And in the case of Bob Mitchell, who owns SunTech uh, a Greenhouse, and he produces what they call the Little Miracles of Manatick, his trademark tomatoes. And I went to visit Bob last week, and he was very emotional, very emotional about the state of farming in the province, a farm that he wanted to pass down to his son, who thinks, maybe I'm not going to do this anymore. And he told me that his product could sit side by side to a Mexican product, and his made in Ontario, made in Ottawa product is 30 per cent higher in cost, mostly due to energy prices. And this is no surprise to you, Speaker, from Leamington, of course, where this same issue is occurring. And just last week, one of the farmers in your area said, look, the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Energy said it's due to humidity in Ontario that we pay higher prices than we're moving down south. That was ridiculous. But it was that farmer, he said, no, it's the high cost of energy. There must be a mistake. And so all I wanted to do today is I don't think the minister's probably going to change his view on cap and trade or the Green Energy Act or in his energy policy. I wanted to use this microphone and my place in this assembly to stand up for Bob Mitchell, to stand up for Fernando, to stand up for Dwight, and all of the other farmers in the P. and Carleton and the rest of Ottawa who feel like the government has let them down. So Bob had two asks. He said, in terms of cap and trade, 
phase it out over a longer term, and second of all, do what they do in the Western provinces and provide me with a rebate just so I can get on my feet again. He couldn't run his lights this past winter because of the exorbitant costs of hydro, which was a competitive disadvantage for him. So, Bob, I'm here for you. I'll always be here for you. And uh, even when the riding splits and I don't represent Carleton anymore, I want Bob and Fernando and Dwight to know this speaker. I will always be there for them. Thank you. Thank you. And now uh, we'll direct my attention to the Minister of Energy. You have up to five minutes, sir, to respond. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, it is my pleasure to be able to uh, be here this evening and, of course, to uh, debate with uh, my honourable colleague from uh, Nepean Carlton, who, um, Mr. Speaker, I do have to say, while we are on different sides of the House and have different political opinions, I do have a lot of respect for and appreciate her input into many important subjects. And I know one that um, you know she's, she's brought up uh, this morning and, and one that uh, I think is important uh, to many of us that are here in the House this evening, Mr. Speaker. Um, of course, is you know our, our agriculture business in this province, and of course our our, our greenhouse growers. And, and I know respo responding to the member this morning, Mr. Speaker, um, I talked about some of the successes that we have in in the greenhouse uh, growers sector. And and while there are successes, Mr. Speaker, there is no question that there are also challenges in this sector. Um, but we're working uh, towards. Uh, solving this, Mr. Speaker. We're dedicated um, together with industry leaders to find solutions. And I know this morning, Mr. Speaker, I spoke about you know, Green Hill Produce, uh, uh, a veteran greenhouse operator, and I'll say in the great riding of Chatham Kent, Mr. Speaker. And it's good news to hear that this organization is planning to invest as much as $100 million in an expanded site and will employ up to 300 new workers, Mr. Speaker. And that's just one example. Uh, of the exciting work taking place in Ontario's greenhouse uh, gas sector. Industry experts, Mr. Speaker, um, have also said that the industry is growing by 150 acres per year and now has nearly 3,000 acres in the province. And that, again, is good news, Mr. Speaker. But as the honourable member um, uh, mentioned earlier, Mr. Speaker, not everyone is seeing that success. And that's why I think, Mr. Speaker, it is incumbent upon me as minister to reach out to the, to the honourable member and find out ways that we can have a conversation with those businesses that she's mentioning to see if there are programs, Mr. Mr. Speaker, that will help these, these organizations because, you know, energy is a very, very important uh, input for greenhouses. And I think both you and I and the honourable member and, and you know, our government and, and the House knows that, Mr. Speaker. And um, making sure that, you know, competitiveness is an important factor that we, we, we constantly remind ourselves about. And that's why, you know, we brought forward a variety of those programs that we've put in place to actually help um, this sector and this industry, but many other industries. And last fall, for example, we announced the expansion of the ICI program, Mr. Speaker, moving that threshold from the participation from three megawatts to, to one megawatt. And when we set this threshold with greenhouses specifically in mind, Mr. Speaker, is important to note because many will now be eligible um, for this program. And as members of this House know, the ICI program saved participants um, that can fully participate by up to one-third uh, off their bill, Mr. Speaker, which is significant. And I know the Industrial Electricity Initiative, or what we call the IEI program, uh, is another program that's benefiting uh, greenhouses in this province, Mr. Speaker. The program is designed to reward new investment in the province and offers some of the lowest electricity rates in North America. And the most recent stream of the program included a number of greenhouse companies, including uh, Roland Plant and Farm, Tweed Inc., and Amco Farms just to mention three. And we know that, Mr. Speaker, electricity isn't the only energy input that is important to these uh, three businesses that I mentioned, but to many other greenhouse growers, and, and that's access to natural gas. Uh, that's very important for greenhouse growers as well. And so we've recently announced, Mr. Speaker, a $100 million grant program to expand uh, access to natural gas programs right across the province. And part of this grant will be targeted for economic development, responding directly to concerns we've heard um, from the greenhouse growers and, and their industry. So we're taking action on, on energy costs, Mr. Speaker, for this sector, and we'll continue to develop programs to help. 
And it's worth noting that our government is supporting greenhouses in other ways, Mr. Speaker, and we're here going to continue to work with the greenhouse sector to help it sustain and be competitive through supporting research and program delivery, committing more than $10.7 million to 440 projects in the greenhouse industry since 2013 through programs such as Growing Forward 2. An additional $6 million that is now available through Growing Forward 2 to assist producers in adopting on-farm innovative and improvement projects, Mr. Speaker. I know I'm running out of time. Uh, I know there are many other um, opportunities here to talk about, like research on lighting to help greenhouse vegetable growers make smart investment decisions, Mr. Speaker. Um, I know this is an important sector to not only the member from uh, Nepean Carlton and to many other in this House, Mr. Speaker, but we are offering programs, and I look forward to continuing to work with the sector. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.